Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things Lego. Hit the link below to find a store near you. My name's Paul. Um, I'm from here in Minnesota. Um, I did the Battle of Rourke's Drift. Uh, it was from the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. It was fought over a 12-hour period. It was 156 British defenders held out uh, for about 12 hours against three to 4,000 Zulu warriors. So uh, my, bu my build encompasses about 95% of the battlefield, uh, which is kind of why I did it. I could do pretty much the whole thing. The only other part I'm, you know, quote unquote missing would be, um, there'd be a hill beyond it that Zulus were on kind of pot shotting down. But I mean, so uh, both buildings here consists of, um, the, the first building here is a hospital. It was converted to a hospital. The second one's a storehouse. Um, Again, it's a 12-hour battle. This depicts about 7.30 p.m. in the battle during the British withdrawal from the hospital as it's being overrun um, towards the hospital. And a lot of what's going on here is um, accurate to that, that point in time. So uh, we can go through it yeah. a bit. Um, so I, the roof does come off. First off, the roof, um, I, I kind of went with the most economical way to, to thatch the roof, just using the vents, and then I staggered them, so it gave it a bit of texture. Um, the fire, the fire. I, I've gotten a lot of compliments on. I'm actually a firefighter, so I, I know how it behaves. So it was, it was kind of fun to build and be like, okay, cool. And then how smoke kind of rolls and, and grabs the structure, things like that. So um, I think that turned out well. I had a couple iterations. My wife actually was like, yeah, it doesn't look like smoke. So I changed it a few times and I texted her a picture yesterday. She's like, it smokes. So I'm like, yes, I'm validated. We're good. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to touch on that. I do have the light-up pins here. The lighting in here doesn't work so good. I just have a couple of regular light-up bricks. So I push the pins in, it'll light up. If it's darker, um, it actually shows through and glows through the the, uh, the the flames pretty well. But because it's so light in here, the lighting's really good. Uh, makes my stuff look really shiny, which is strange for me because I'm an old guy with old Lego. But um, but uh, but but I, I did put that that in there. Um, the interior of the building, um, the interior of both buildings is fully done, and I'm destroying my stuff, but it's okay. I've done this like a dozen times because I, I did a really deep dive on this battle and love talking about it. So um, I'll fix that later. But the roof is pretty sturdy, um, and we got a full interior to um, the hospital. Um, so what's going on here is the British have broken in. Uh, this is unfortunately private. Joseph Williams here. He was defending this door. The, British, the Zulus pulled him out. Um, not so great things happened to him. Uh, the other British here are former patients. Um, they're accurate to where they were found at the end of the battle. Um, uh, this gentleman here looks like a Zulu, but he's not. The British had um, native auxiliaries. He could be noted by the, the red scarf. I wanted to um, put kind of a real, like a, like a, an accuracy to a lot of these guys. That's Private Cole that you're filming right now. He was defending a, a room in the hospital, lost his nerve, went outside and got shot right when the battle started. So he's been there for a while. Um, you got uh, Private Hayden, Private Horrigan, uh, Private Adams, Sergeant Maxfield, and then the VC winners are over here evacuating the hospital. They end up pushing guys out the window and then the evacuation's ongoing through the kind of no man's land as the, the Zulu attack is going on. This is actually the second Zulu attack of the battle. Uh, the first was repulsed on the south wall over there. You can see the remains of that. Um, a note about that is they all have the darker shields. Those were all younger unmarried men. When you got married Zulu culture, you could wear these head rings, which is why they have the head rings on and or carry a white shield. So um, those are uh, white shield and head ring uh, Zulus are um, married Zulu men that are a bit older. Um, I also, uh, this battle was, it, it was very well publicized in England, so you know, a lot of the defenders got kind of a celebrity status, so there was a lot of pictures and things that be, I'd be able to, I was able to find, so um, a lot of the, a lot of what's going on, or the, the, the people in the battle, I have faces I was able to match up in LEGO um, to what they look like, so a lot of them are pretty accurate. So a couple of things, uh, other things that are going on here, um, you have Corporal Sheese over here, he jumped the wall. Um, at about the same time the hospital was evacuated because there was a group of Zulus down here um, pot shotting these guys. He jumped the wall and cleared them out and then jumped back over. He survived one of Victoria Cross. Uh, he was the only member of the NNC to do so. There were 10 other Victoria Crosses awarded in this battle to members of the British Army. So you'd have had uh, Private Hook, Robert Jones, Private Robert Jones, Private William Jones, Private John Williams, Corporal William Allen, Corporal Fred Hitch. Um, the gentleman in the black is Assistant Commissary Dalton. He won a Victoria Cross. Lieutenant Chard, 
Lieutenant Brumhead, who was right here, and Surgeon Reynolds, they all won Victoria Crosses in the battle. Um, when the British fell back, you see they have the, the mealy bag redoubt here. This is a, not sandbags, this is cornmeal. This is all their food stores and then biscuit boxes full of crackers that they pulled out of the storehouse. Um, I do have a funny little Easter egg in the corn house, too, and, and the, I'm sorry, the storehouse too, um, as well as one in the cookhouse over there that we can show. Just quick, I don't, I don't want to take too much of your time, but a lot, lot going on there, a um, lot to see. Um, we do have the luckiest man at Rourke's Drift, Garner Arthur Howard over here. Uh, he survived the battle unharmed despite being stepped on by a bunch of Zulus throughout the night. Um, they called him the luckiest man. He wandered back into the camp at about uh, 8 the next morning, not, not harmed, and they couldn't believe he was, he was alive. So um, let's see. One other, uh, another little Easter egg here, if I can reach. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, we have the uh, the storehouse where they're defending through the loopholes. And you have the only thing that left in the storehouse was the rum, which is in that second room in the barrels. Um, and then because they didn't want the British getting frisky and drunk during this fight, uh, uh, Lieutenant Brum had posted a guard. So I have a guard in there guarding the rum to keep the British from going in there and getting... Uh, getting their 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 drink on <laughs> while they're while they're trying to hold themselves out to the zoos. Um, what is this section? That's kind of the gray stone. That is the cattle trail. So there were cattle in there. Um, they let them all out before the battle started. Um, that one there's actually two two cattle trail. This one was the well built one that they included in their defenses. Um, they post a line of British fire uh, British soldiers out there to defend it, and um, they held up for most of the night till eventually being pulled back when the Zulus started attacking in force from that side. Again, there's just a small attack going on there because this is the second phase of the battle. Interesting, the guy in the middle is uh, Private Evan Jones, who the Zulus took his gun, so he fist fought Zulus for a few hours uh, because he didn't. He, they took his gun, so you can see them there just kind of doing his thing, rifleless. Um, I actually have him over here and information he served. Um, through the Western Front of World War I, 43 years in the Army, survived that too, and um, retired one of the most decorated drum, drummers in the Army. So um, a lot of, uh, the cool thing about this build too is uh, the deep dive I took historically. Um, there's a lot of uh, cool people stories with it. Um, you know, some unfortunate ones, uh, PTSD was prevalent after this battle with a lot of the defenders, um, but a lot of them went on to, to have, you know, pretty enjoyable lives at the same time. Um, I know uh, Private uh, uh, William Jones, he was in uh, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show uh, when it toured England. Um, uh, Fred, Fred Hitch, this fella here, uh, he proudly wore his Victoria Cross for the rest of his life, drove taxi cabs in London all the way to motor cabs. Um, you know, just, just, you know, I got history around the, around the build too, but um, it was a very fun build to do. Um, one of the things I really like about the way you've laid this out is how natural it feels with the way that you've done the landscaping. So uh, it's not just like a square base. So yeah. explain a little bit more kind of about your approach and how this came together. Okay. So um, I don't want to, you know, at the risk of sounding, you know, lazy, um, <laughs> I didn't want to do squares because I, I feel like there's not square, uh, it's like straight lines in nature. So I tried to keep everything angled and, and, and given more of a natural look. Same with um, all the all the foliage. Uh, I try to break it up in the back. So the difference here is that the British didn't have time to clear the brush out here, so it's a lot more brushy in front. Whereas the the Zulus were coming from the south because they had looped around the station. So the British cleared out most of the brush in the south of the station. So that's why you see them uh, kind of in different colors. That's more or less cleared out. But I did uh, layer the plant pieces. I used the small ones so I could get more. Um, different variations and, and angles and I layered them in places so that it was a little bit more depth to it um, but you can see I have more plants here I got some little uh, uh, some flower stems some old-fashioned flower stems um, I believe those are like bionicle ten tentacles something like that and then uh, uh, some some plant pieces here um, but yeah I try to keep things a bit more irregular in terms of straight lines versus angles um, just because you, you don't find a lot of perfectly straight lines in nature so um, I actually kind of like the way it laid out too. So, um, yeah. Now, obviously, one of the the highlights of this build is all the minifigures yes. and depicting both sides. You know how many minifigs are on the layout? So I have all 156 British uh, British defenders represented. So every one of them, um, their uniforms are as accurate as I could get. This is all stock Lego. 
Um, so the uniforms are as, as accurate as I could get. I have some you know, Civil War uniforms standing in for artillery, uh, some old firefighter uniforms for uh, commissariat officers, some variation in the NNC guys. Um, and then my last count was 161 Zulus, so 317 uh right around that number on the on the whole mock i was actually worried yesterday i wouldn't have enough zulus and i it turned out with a pretty satisfying amount with 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 how it ended up so what were the primary torsos you used for each side okay so the the primary torso i used for the british was the collectible minifigure um the um uh, royal guard and then for the Zulus, I used Pirates of the Caribbean cannibals, but I changed out their heads because they didn't wear face paint um, to, to you know regular uh, regular uh, uh, minifigure heads. Yeah. Um, I did use uh, yellow for the for the uh, for the for the Europeans, um, just because there was more variation in yellow faces. Everybody in here, except for the dead guys, because there aren't that many. Um, figures with closed eyes everybody here has a, a, a different face the ones that are duplicated had kind of weird smiles I covered up with the big black bushy mustache from the pirate <laughs> sets to kind of to kind of break them up a bit so um, I try to get creative to kind of give everybody their own individual um, their own individual uh, feel and part in this battle I, my, my objective I know there's nobody alive from the Battle of Rourke's Drifting where the last guy to die was uh, Color Sergeant Bourne over here um, in uh, uh, the day after VE Day, uh, actually in 1945. Uh, but I will, you know, if there was one here, I, want, I would want him to be able to look at this and say, yeah, you know, I was right here. And, um, you know, I, I just try to do it justice. This isn't a very, you know, widely known battle in the United States just because we didn't participate in it. So um, it was something I was familiar with, but really didn't take a deep dive till I started this build. Um, and, and the build itself was super, super enjoyable. Um, I started with the storehouse, actually worked my way this way uh, towards the hospital. Um, the hospital, for me, is a very, very satisfying build. Uh, my wife actually asked uh, why they have nicer floors than we do at home. <laughs> but <laughs> but, um, but it, it, was, it was very satisfying. It was, it was fun to do, too, because I laid everything out, um, and I placed everything as I was placing the tiles, and then I put the uh, single studs in there. Um, to where to where I wanted everybody to be and 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 for them to uh, what I wanted to be doing so it was it was an extremely fun build to do took me about 18 months kind of in my spare time um, you know and I don't know how lit up my, my light bricks are my kids love the light bricks so when I build they they play with the lights and so but yeah it's 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 very cool um, means a lot to me this is actually my my first show uh, this is my first big build. I um, wanted to do one of these big, big builds since I was a little kid. Um, and now that I'm an adult, I have the means to be able to do it. So um, yeah. it's been very fun. Well, it's very impressive for your first big layout like this. Um, we, it's, obviously, you've done a lot of research with all the information you have here. What did you find were kind of the most helpful resources? Where did you do a lot of that research? So I have the books I used over here. The, the roof is laying on one of them. One is the uh, campaign book, Rourke Strip, 1879. That had a lot of pictures in it and a lot, it, it had the layout of the hospital and the layout of the storehouse that I was able to use. Um, they aren't perfectly to scale, but they're pretty close as far as minifigure scale goes. I actually overestimated the minifigures. I assumed the, the, the average person was about six foot. The average British soldier this battle was 5'3". Uh, so, so I estimated a little bit big, uh, but then for, for placement and figuring out where everybody was, uh, volume one and two of Rourke's Drift by those who were there, it has all the personal accounts and it has some Zulu accounts. Um, it, they were extremely helpful books in placing the people. And actually, just to touch on the Zulus, the Zulu warriors were just as courageous as the British in this battle, in my opinion, um, facing down what, you know, what they did for how long they did. They had participated in the Battle of Isanda Juana that morning and um, had already fought one battle for the day, fast marched about 20 miles since 8 a.m. Uh, without, without food on empty stomachs and then sustained attacks for 10 to 12 hours on this outpost. Um, they, they knew how to use their weapons, they knew their tactics, they were uh, equated to about the Spartans of African tribes. They were, they were very brave, very courageous, and very good warriors. So um, the, the fact that the British were able to hold out is a feat in and of itself in, in terms of the 156 defenders here, but you know the, the Zulus were were amazing as well. Yeah. So, well, this is fantastic work. So now that you've tackled your first kind of big project like this, do you have plans for other battles or any other ideas for the future at this point? Um, so I I've tossed some back and forth. Um, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm I'm kind of intimidated by going upwards. I was thinking about like uh, you know something with Gallipoli or um, 
someone was telling me uh, San Juan Hill would be cool. I, I really like the turn of the century stuff. Um, the you know about 1879 here to World War One. I. I actually looked at uh, Fort Wagner as well in the Civil War, uh, the 54th Massachusetts. Um, uh, you know, kind of as depicted, but again, more real. There was a movie, Zulu, on this. Um, similar, uh, Glory is a similar movie for the 54th, um, but I've been looking into information on that, kind of how to build out part of Fort Wagner and maybe do that as well. So I can't promise anything, but but I def there's definitely more, there's more, there's more pump bumbling around in my head. So <laughs> Nice. Um, well, keep up yeah. the great work, and we'll look forward to seeing more in the future. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Thank you.